Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm going to explain the key quotations that I've used for the Sign of Four revision quotation song. So on the screen you can see one, two, three, four, five key quotations from the novel and they cover the important themes, ideas, messages, context that I think you are going to want to write about in the exam. So I'll talk through them and explain the quotations in this video, but do check out the Revision Songs playlist for the song itself, and I'll also put it up on iTunes. So the first thing I want to talk about is the importance of the genre of the detective novel. And that is tied up in the quotation, a calculating machine. This is where Watson is so um, uh, sort of admiring the genius detective work of Sherlock Holmes that he calls him a calculating machine. And I think that's a nice quotation to tie into the detective genre. As you know, the Sherlock Holmes novels were some of the earliest detective stories. Didn't really begin the genre, that was Edgar Allan Poe, but you know, really kind of made it very famous and they help to shape the genre of detective fiction. So your answer may well bring in the genre of detective fiction. Remember genre classes as AO3, context, and the quotation, a calculating machine, is a good one because it covers one of the key conventions of detective fiction, which is that the detective must be intriguing for the reader. So Watson describes Holmes as a calculating machine. Uh, he actually goes on to say there is something positively inhuman in you at times. So this surreal skill that Holmes has in detecting and working things out uh, makes him intriguing and also, of course, a contrast to the police who, who are just completely laughable and ridiculous and can't work anything out. So a calculating machine is a great quotation about Sherlock Holmes as a character and it also ties in with the importance of the detective genre. Now, hand in hand with that comes the theme of justice, which is this first quotation, we should each always act for all. The whole novel can be seen as one of justice versus evil, the two sort of opposing forces. And in the final chapter of the novel, when Jonathan Small is telling his story, the meaning of the title is made clear when he tells us about the sign of four, this idea of signing all four names at the bottom of the document about the treasure as a sign that we should each always act for all. In other words, no one for you know going out for themselves, but we should all take care of each other. Now, what I love about this quotation, not only does it explain the importance of the title, not only does it uh, refer to the theme of justice and doing the right thing, but also it comes at the end of the novel. And structurally, what's happening here is the author is leaving us with this important message. So we don't really find out about the significance of the title or the meaning of the title of the novel until right at the end. And therefore, it's the first thing and the last thing that we read, or one of the last things we read, and as a result, it sticks in our mind. So opposite to justice is evil. And in this novel, evil is represented as being linked to what we might call the fear of the other or the exotic. And it's important to understand the context here. Britain had become very wealthy from its empire and colonies overseas. Um, the import and export of goods was on the whole raising the standard of living in Britain. And as a result of that, many people came from these colonies to live in Britain, looking to make their fortune to increase their uh, standard of living. And this contributed to the massive population explosion in Britain from 1 million people in 1800 to 7 million people by 1900. So in Victorian England, there was a mix of interest and fear in the exotic and foreign people and things. And in the sign of four, we've got the character of Tonga, a small man from the Andaman Islands. And the description of him from our narrator Watson saying, never have I seen features so deeply marked with all bestiality. Now, this comes from Watson, our narrator, and up until this point in the text, we've learned to respect our honest narrator. He tells us very clearly what's going on. He's honest and open about his emotions for Mary Morstan. So he's a believable and respectable first person narrator. So when he talks about 
um, the character of Tonga in such negative terms. Um, not only is there, you know, language use there and all the rest of it, but the fact that it's our narrator doing this and a narrator we've grown to respect and, um, you know, uh, sort of uh, appreciate adds to the sense of, of evil in foreign characters. And it is very cringeworthy when we read this book. There are some bits that are so kind of uh, what we would call today racist. But it's not that Arthur Conan Doyle was making particularly a comment on how people were like that. He was tapping into the fears of Victorian England. He was tapping into the sense that people were afraid of the exotic, afraid of foreign people, afraid of them in the same way that um, you know, the gothic genre might, might point out fear of, you know, the supernatural. So it's really important that you understand the context that links to that, but also the fact that the idea of evil is um, sort of personified by the exotic, by the foreign, the foreign names, the references to India, the references to this character of Tonga. And there's a lovely quotation that goes with that, which might seem a bit of a bizarre one, which is this one of Small's when he says, in Worcestershire, the life of a man seems a great and a sacred thing. And at first glance, this wouldn't be a quotation that you would choose to memorize, but I actually think it's very significant because what is the context of this? Small is telling us his story and he's telling us about how he agreed to be involved in the murder of Achmet, the original owner of the treasure. And he basically says, look, if this had happened in England, I wouldn't have done it. Um, because in, in England, in Worcestershire, we have a, a, a value for, the, for human life. But when I was abroad, there is less value for human life. And that ties in again with this idea of the fear of the exotic, the fear of the foreign, the fear of the other. And that contrasts very greatly with what's represented here as some kind of supernatural British value that this guy is like, you know, I wouldn't have done this if I was at home, which of course is ironic to say the least, because, you know, where you are does shouldn't sort of have an impact on you being happy to get involved in a murder. And then finally, we have the quotation, a dense drizzly fog lay low upon the great city. Now, this is a quotation based on London, the setting in London. And not only does it link to the frightening sense in the novel, so the setting is frightening, much of the story takes place at night or in fog, and they're, they're both things we associate with fear. But it also reminds us of what the great city is. The great city itself is London, a setting which has so much significance in the novel that it's almost a character in its own right. Now, London at the time was often described as a criminal's playground. London in the 19th century, or at least the early 19th century, the first 30 years or so, was full of crime. There was no effective police force. We see that in the novel. There was the overcrowding that I've talked about in this video. And all of this setting of relative darkness, thanks to the weather, combines for this sort of cumulative effect of criminal gangs and no-go areas. We see that Watson goes to parts of London he's not familiar with, the parts of London that aren't for the middle and upper class. And the reader, of course, would be all too aware of this as well. So not only is the setting of London significant for a number of factors, but also the fact that the weather here reflects the mood of the text. So these are the quotations I would memorize. Now, everything I've sort of hinted at in this video is contained in a lot more detail in Mr. Bruff's Guide to the Sign of Four, which is available in ebook at mrbruff.com or paperback on Amazon. But I do think these are good quotations because they talk about the themes of evil and justice, the idea of evil being personified by the foreign or the other or the exotic. Uh, they reference the detective genre and the genius of Sherlock Holmes and the significance of the setting as well, being in London uh, and, and what that sort of means. So I hope you found this video useful. As I said, it's just an explanation of the songs, so make sure that you check out the song as well and um, give the video a thumbs up.